Hello and welcome to this uh, instrument walkthrough of Cello Untamed. For a lot of you that have already got the Violin Untamed library, this will seem quite familiar to you, uh, but it's worth sticking around because there's definitely some improvements we've made over the recording and what we've done with the library. As well as you're just going to want to hear this because this thing sounds absolutely amazing. We're so pleased with how it sounds. It sounds really emotional, it sounds really soulful to me. It just gives you an immediate feedback about what the cellist was doing. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's a, it's a good one. So if you want to skip basically to the what this sounds like, the microphones and the articulations and that, just there's a link in the, in the description uh, below in the YouTube description. But I just want to kind of introduce uh, the improvements we have made and the fact that your comments and your feedback have directly made their way into this. We've had so many email conversations, uh, phone calls, uh, direct messages on Instagram, uh, tweets, all those kind of things, uh, basically saying like, we love the violin, but we just want more of the improvisations. Now the improvisations for those who are new to this are basically really long notes, and this is the crux of the instrument. This is the, the kind of like the reason the library exists is because I couldn't find anything else out there like this, is that the, the improvisations are just long notes that are just played with an improvisation. There's, there's no kind of like specific direction. Uh, there's no kind of like specific sound that we wanted. It was just like, just do what you feel right. You know, when you're playing the cello, just do what you feels right on that particular note and then we'll, we'll record it and then it will sound amazing. So they're quite long notes, 15 to 25 seconds each. And they really just sound like there is a cellist in front of you playing your composition and just adding their own spin on it and their own sound on it. So we had, uh, a chat online with somebody the night before we were about to go into the recording studio to do this. And it was one of those comments. It was just like, yeah, I love it, but give me more. Like, you know, what are you doing? You need to just give us more. This is the best thing, you know, that I've heard in a long time. It's really inspirational to play, but like, give me more. And we were like, okay, how are we gonna do this? We've already like, you know, got the recording studio set, the schedule was all set, everything was kind of planned. So I basically phoned up the cellist, Polly, uh, the day before and said, look, you know, we need to do this. Like people are asking for it. Let's go. And she was like, absolutely. Let's let you know, like I'm well up for it. If we can do it, let's go for it. So for those of you who already got the violin library, the biggest improvement that you'll see is that there's just way more improvisations. So for the uh, violin, we recorded every other note at three different velocity layers. So kind of like the gentle, uh, velocity layer where it's just kind of like much more of a floaty sound, the medium velocity layer which is a bit more emotional, a bit more of a standard sound, and then the the chaotic, you know, wild, intense layer at the top which is, you know, which is what this is starting to be known for. Uh, so with the cello we recorded every single note over the three octaves uh, of, the, of the cello and we recorded two takes. So you've got a total of 222 totally unique performances over the keyboard. The idea being that when you're playing it, when you're just playing a solo melody line or a chord structure, it'd be quite difficult to hear the same thing twice unless you're just jamming the key, the same key, over and over again. But as you're playing like a slow chord progression or a slow melody line, it's, it just sounds like a totally unique performance the whole time. So that's the biggest improvement that you'll see. And it's, 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 so, it's so good that what, we've, what we did is we phoned up Henry and said, look, your library's amazing, everybody loves it, but can you do more of it? And he was like, yeah, absolutely. So the idea is, it's not booked in yet, but the idea is to go back with Henry into the recording studio, set everything up identically to make it sound exactly the same and just record a whole lot more improvisations on the violin. So for the people that have already owned the violin, that will be a free update for you. And anybody that buys it in the meantime, in between now and when we release that update, you'll also get that as and when we record it. So I think without you know any more waffling from me, that gives you a bit of a backstory about how we've uh, progressed this library. But I think we should probably just start to listen to it, uh, go through the improvisations, go through the other articulations that we've included, uh, 
the microphone positions, very, very similar to what we did for the violin library. But like I say, if you already own this, it's definitely worth sticking around to hear these. And then kind of like some of the other controls as well. So the improvisations layer first. So this is what this sounds like. This is uh, improvisations A. So this is the first set of improvisations that Polly did. playing there's no dynamic controls at the moment I don't need to do anything that is just the natural sound of the instrument it's kind of just you know you're just playing and listening to it and just going it, it's so inspirational when you hear it back it sounds like there's a cellist in front of you just playing what you're playing on the keyboard it's quite interesting so I think we should just listen to a few more of these improvisations just so you get an idea of how they sound when you play really really quietly on the keyboard <laughs> You get the quiet, sort of like gentle, dynamic layer. And it's still changing, it's still kind of ebbing and flowing. Then when you play the same note, but a bit louder, you get much more of a standard sound. And then when you really hit your keyboard hard, it starts to get a bit more chaotic and a bit more interesting. So I'll play some of these now just so you get an idea of what they sound like over the keyboard and some of the different dynamic layers as well. Uh, so you get a, a real good sense of what you can achieve with this. where it starts to sound really interesting is when you start to play chord progressions suddenly it suddenly sounds like there's two or three or four or five however many keys you've got held down cellists in front of you each putting their own slightly different spin on the notes that they've been given to play As you can sound like it, it sounds absolutely amazing when you're just playing it it's just like it's so inspirational to play because it's constantly just giving you something new your ears never ever get bored of this it's been really difficult to develop it because every time we've like kind of like loaded the samples and just sat there just playing it for like you know 15 20 minutes and then gone we need to get back to work because you know we need to get this instrument uh, ready for release uh, but that's what improvisations A sound like. So every single note across these three octaves is a totally unique performance at three completely different velocity layers. And they each kind of like blend quite nicely. As you could hear then, sometimes I was hitting the note quite hard and something more kind of like uh, wild and a bit more uh, dynamic would suddenly pop through. And they blend quite nicely as well. You don't necessarily all have to stay on the same dynamic layer just to make them blend. I think they work really well when you do suddenly just want a note accented, just hit the keyboard pretty hard and something really nicely will come through. So the improvisations B is kind of like, it's exactly the same, but it's just a slightly different variation 
uh, on the same note. So it's a totally new performance. So you can key switch uh, as you're going, as you're playing live, or you can key switch uh, obviously on on MIDI afterwards. So you get, a, you know, if you there's a really specific. Uh, performance improvisation that you like then just you know key switch and you can and you can change that or you can you know have have the two patches independently uh on the on your daw so this is what improvisations b sounds like Brilliant. Absolutely love it. So those improvisations A and B, you can play them totally independently. What I've been doing recently is putting, uh, you kind of do what you want to do with your, with your composition, double up the tracks exactly the same, put improvisations A on one cello, put improvisations B on the next uh, cello, and then just pan them ever so slightly left and right so it does sound like there's two cellists in front of you. That's a really nice tip uh, that uh, I've used a couple of times recently. So we'll dive into the uh, just some of the other articulations that we've got now. This is just the normali one, which is just kind of like standard long notes. Uh, this is going to sound quite, you know, like normal compared to the improvisations that you've just heard. But a lot of people do like just a normal uh, long note sound. There is a vibrato control included. Or you can just make them straight. And a lot of feedback was that they really like the fact that the vibrato is user controllable uh, and it wasn't like baked into the sound. That's what the improvisations wanted. They are baked in, they are totally individual performances, but the vibrato. So that's the normali one. Uh, next one we've got is uh, flatando. Uh, people love the violin flatando sound, uh, and this is this is a, like no exception. This definitely sounds as, as good as that one. really nice that's absolutely one of my favorites it's so gentle so subtle so nice really really great sound uh, so the next one we've got is we did two versions of the soul pont uh, we did a quite, a quite a soft one I mean soul pont's quite an aggressive sound anyway but we did a softer version and a much more gritty version as well so here's the here's the example of the two depending on what style of music you like again you can add vibrato to these if you want to And then the gritty one is much, much more aggressive. It's really, really good. It's like, it's quite like nasty and sort of like down there and 
for your most emotional cues where you need something quite angular, that's, that's a really good one. Uh, then we've got a tremolo sound. Uh, this is like this ties in really well with the violin sound. Very very similar sound. Again, this this dynamically crossfade, so it's uh, it's a good one. Quite shimmery at the bottom and sort of like there's a lot of tension building. And then it gets really frantic towards the end. I love how the the uh, the releases work as well can really hear that bow come off the strings. Really great sound. It's so like frantic and aggressive. It's really, really good. Haven't heard anything like it before. Uh, the circular bowing one. Uh, this was included on the Violin Untamed library as well. Uh, and it's quite an individual sound. It's not for everything, so don't I don't think you'll be reaching for this all the time. Uh, but again, it's something quite unique, so I didn't really uh, want to exclude it from this. It sounds really good if you put a lot of reverb on this one, actually, and just kind of make it much more of a texture than anything. Take some of the reverb off so you can hear it a bit drier. And it gets as you increase your mod wheel, as you increase that uh, uh, dynamics uh, slider, it kind of gets a bit more fast and a bit more frantic as well. So not only does it increase the natural tone of it as you naturally start to play louder, but it, it gets slightly faster as well. <laughs> So that's really good. It's like it's not something you hear every day, and it's quite a nice, just as a background, sort of like a pulsing background to some music. It's a really nice articulation to have in your arsenal. False harmonics next. Uh, these were recorded over two octaves. Uh, these sound really gentle, really nice. You can add vibrato to these again if you want to. Something quite like an like an organ sound to it, almost like a pipe organ to me sometimes when I've been playing these. Sort of like you can hear so much of the rosin on the bow and the strings. It's a really subtle sound, and like I say, to me sometimes that just sounds like an organ, but like, you know, not just any old standard organ. So short articulations next, we've got spiccato and then we've got pizzicato. And I never really liked short articulations before we recorded these. I was always kind of like quite a long chord progression type person. And uh, since we've recorded these, the spiccato sound absolutely like they're really like full and rich and detailed. I like using, we'll go through the microphones shortly, but I really like using them with the, the spot microphone all the way up so you get uh, everything that that uh, cello is doing up front in your face. And these have been recorded over three different uh, velocity layers. Uh, so you, you can get really gentle. Or you can get quite aggressive, the top layer when you dig in. Sounds really, really sort of like sharp, sharp attack on the, on the bow. sound and like I say if you use it just make sure you push that spot microphone all the way to the ceiling because it will sound even better uh, and then we've got the pizzicato articulation again this has been recorded like really really gently all the way up to a bar tock so you can hear that snap uh, it's a really nice sound, uh, but you can go really gentle as well. Quite a 
quite round at the bottom. Again, with that spot microphone all the way to the top, I think it sounds really absolutely beautiful. So onto the microphone positions next. I've turned off uh, the reverb. There's no EQ on these, no compression, no, basically no external processing whatsoever on these. So you get an idea of exactly what each of these microphones sounds like. Uh, so the spot microphone first, FET 47, absolutely like, you know, 1970s classic microphone. It sounds absolutely amazing. Really, really close to the cello. It's a really, really detailed sound. Very, very close up. I think you could just use that one on its own if you needed to, just to really be very, very present and up face, up in your face. Uh, close microphones next. So these are a stereo pair above uh, the cellist. Uh, so these give you a bit more of a perspective sound, a stereo sound. So a bit more liveliness to those. Those two combined for me sound really nice. I think you could just use the close or the spot microphones on their own uh, and be absolutely fine. Both of them give you a really nice sound. Uh, the room microphones next. So these are a good six to sort of eight foot away from the cellist now. So you get much more of like a, a sense of what the room was, uh, what the room sounds like. And then the gallery microphones, which are all the way up in the ceiling of the nave. So you get the total natural reverb decay sound of the of the room. Uh, so like for these, especially the shorter notes, it kind of gives a much more uh, real sense of the instrument in a space. So I kind of like together, you kind of mix them however you want. There's no like right or wrong way with this. As with anything in music, there's no right way. Uh, I've been kind of having the spot microphones there, the close, and then just the room and the gallery microphones uh, just backed off a little bit. Let's hear them just with some of the improvisation uh, layers as well. Lovely, really, really good. Uh, the other controls we've got, I'll just uh, go over these quickly. You've got a saturation control, uh, which is basically a tape saturation control. Sounds really good, sounds kind of like a bit gritty, and a bit more like, uh, sounds just kind of thickens up the sound a little bit. And like I said on the violin one, if you go too, too heavy handed with this one, it, it, it kind of distorts a little bit, but that's, Kind of what tape saturation is about, isn't it? Uh, we'll bypass that one. The width control. It's a solo instrument recorded in in stereo, but if you wanted to open up the width of the sound and really pan those stereo microphones to one side, you can bring it all the way in to the middle, so you get a mono sound right down the middle. Even though all of the microphones are stereo, this will make it mono. you open it up. Make sure you're listening to this on headphones or speakers, not on your iPhone, because you, you'll have no idea what this does otherwise. Really, 
really nice. That's bypassed by default, but if you want to open it up, it's quite a useful tool. If, especially if you're just doing a really simple composition with only two or three instruments, is just to make everything a bit more spacious and a bit more wide opened. Uh, you can use that control there. The reverb is a standard hall reverb. It's kind of just set to a default position when you first open up the instrument, which sounds great, like uh, just to get you started and just to get you playing without having to reach for plugins. I, th I think it sounds pretty nice. convolution hall reverb it just sounds it, it blends quite nicely with other reverbs you can obviously bypass it and just add your own uh you know reverbs the stock logic ones or something like fab filter or something but as a start for 10 i think it sounds really nice uh, here it sounds you know open it up a little bit this might be too much but let's go for it anyway Too much can you ever have too much reverb i'm not sure but that's uh that's what it sounds like anyway and then you've got these reverb uh, eq controls at the bottom which if you just want to shape the sound of the cello really quickly without having to reach for an eq uh, control you can do i'll just uh show you what these sound like as with any eq control you can go way too much with these so just just a little bit is, is normally enough just bring the sound into the, the kind of area that you want it to be in. Just take away some of the top end if you want to back it away and make, kind of make it sit with some other instruments like a violin or a, a piano or something, just take a little bit of the high end off. Still got too much reverb on. Here we go. So yeah, I like I like an EQ control like that. Really nice. Uh, if you want to default any of these to their regular positions that we've set them in, hit Command and left click on your mouse, and it'll just get you back to exactly where you started. So that's it, that is Cello Untamed. The improvisations is where it's at. Uh, I had one phone call where he just says, I don't want anything else, just give me the improvisations next time. But we've, you know, they're there anyway. They're, they all sound good to me. Uh, but the improvisations is where it's at. You've got 222 totally unique uh, performances. Uh, and every single one just is inspiring. I think you could take just quite a normal... Uh, like, you know, piano chord progression, open this up and then suddenly it just sounds alive. Suddenly it sounds like there's human emotion in your music. And I, I, it's so inspiring just to sit there and play it. You've got improvisations A, you've got improvisations B, so you can switch between them. And then, uh, as I said earlier, there is a patch that we've included that just randomly switches between the two. So you'll, it's rare that you'll hear the same sound twice in, in the same cue. So if you really want to be inspired and uh, just surprised by your own music, then open up that one and go for it. So if you've got any comments on on kind of like what you've heard or what you've seen, if I've missed something out or you think, oh, like, you know, what does that do or how does that work or uh, there's something you just want to know, just add a comment to uh, the, the, the feed below and we'll reply to it. But like I said, right at the beginning, your feedback has been directly influencing how we've been making these instruments already. You know, within days of releasing Violin Untamed, we had emails saying, love it, absolutely love it, but just do this as well. Uh, so that's what we've done. <laughs> we've, we've done this. Uh, so that's what we're all about, is this kind of communication between us and you, uh, kind of making your music better. And that's what we're, that's what we're here for. Uh, so yeah, really hope you like it. Enjoy playing with it. Enjoy using it. I'd love to hear, as always, like your, you know, when you're when you've used this and when you've put it into your own music. Send us an MP3. Let us know what it sounds like, uh, and just like yeah, l let us hear how kind of inspired you've been uh, by playing with it. So thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>